Hello, this is Franciscan Father Garrett Edmonds speaking to you from the Franciscan Monastery in Washington, D.C. In just a few days, we'll be celebrating the Feast of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And I'm standing today in front of the replica at the Franciscan Monastery of the Church of the Tomb of Mary in Jerusalem. According to the tradition of Jerusalem, Mary lives out her life after Christ's ascension into heaven and after Pentecost in the midst of the first Christian community in Jerusalem. And when the days of her life here on earth come to an end, she is buried in a tomb at the foot of the Mount of Olives, where one of the oldest churches in Jerusalem, re represented by what is behind me here, still exists. This, of course, is an empty tomb. It is not a tomb where Mary's body remains, but a tomb from which she is assumed body and soul into heaven according to the teaching and belief of the church. Actually, this teaching of the church was not formalized until 1950 when it was declared as a doctrine. But long before that, the church, both east and west, believed that Mary had been taken into heaven at the end of her life. That belief was represented by this church of the tomb of Mary, which was one of the very first built in Jerusalem. So what does the Feast of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary teach us? As always, Mary shows us the way to be a disciple of her son. She is a model of the, what every Christian is supposed to do. And in this case, she is a model of our destiny to be one with God in heaven forever. This is also a feast that is known as a harvest feast because of the time of year in which it comes. Mary is in many ways the first harvest of Christ's gift of redemption, of Christ's gift of salvation. Where Mary goes before us to her place in heaven with God, we too are destined to join. Now, the story of the Assumption is not to be found anywhere in the Gospels. But that does not mean that the meaning of this feast is not to be found in the scriptures. In Paul's letter to the uh, Corinthians, we read what this feast really means. Paul tells us he wants to tell us something wonderful, a mystery that we'll probably never fully understand. Paul goes on to say that we're all going to die, but we are not going to remain in death. Rather, that which is perishable will be replaced by the imperishable. That is part of the resurrection scheme of things. Death is swallowed up by triumph. Who gets the last word, O death, Paul asks. O death, who's afraid of you now? It was sin, Paul says, that made death so frightening. But now, in one single victorious stroke of life, Sin, guilt, and death are gone, and this is the gift of our Master, the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Mary's being assumed into heaven is the first indication we have of that great gift. Jesus dies for us on the cross, he rises again to give us life, and in the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, he shows us where we too are destined to be. On the Feast of the Assumption, August 15th here at the Franciscan Monastery. We will have an outdoor mass here in the gardens at 7 o'clock at night, a candlelight mass uh, in the Grotto of Lourdes. We invite you all to join us and we'd be very happy to see you on August 15th at 7 o'clock for the Mass and Celebration of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. If you can't join us, we hope that wherever you are celebrating this great feast, you will have an opportunity to remember the great gift that God has given us, victory over sin, death, and guilt, so that we, like Mary, can live forever with God in heaven. This is Franciscan Father Garrett Edmonds wishing you a good day and a happy celebration of the Feast of the Assumption.